And so if determinists wish to define human beings as rain clouds, which is what determinism fundamentally is, well, that's fine. Then don't debate with a rain cloud and don't say that there's anything true or false about the directional pattern of a rain cloud. And certainly don't uh, attempt to interact with a rain cloud and change it through language. Uh, that just wouldn't make any sense because it's just two rain clouds crashing into each other. And so my question to determinists is, okay, I should never, ever hear about determinism. I should never hear about it because in the same way that a rain cloud never hears a debate about whether rain clouds are good or bad because nobody sits there, nobody gets a big ladder, climbs up to a rain cloud and says, you know, I have some problems with you because I just watered my lawn and now you're raining and I have to pay for that water, which I didn't need to use anyway. That is incredibly inconsiderate. And can I talk to your mother, please, because I just don't think you've been taught well. So, um, if you have a theory that says pushing a marble makes it move, then um, if you th then I can translate it to if you think that pushing something makes it move, then why don't you push your house to your holiday destination, right? And uh, if you believe. Uh, fucking makes you pregnant, why don't you fuck a rain cloud and make it pregnant? Determinists should believe their own stuff. You know, I only talk to people who believe that pushing a marble makes it move if I see them pushing their house to their holiday destination. <sighs> like I uh, discussed in my previous video, the cause and effect chain in nature is uh, chaotic, which means it is deterministic, but at some points very sensitive to initial conditions. It means that very small changes in initial conditions can have hugely different outcomes. Almost. Well, usually mentioned in the butterfly effect. Flapping a butterfly's uh, wings at one point can cause a hurricane a month later somewhere else. Um, so yeah, um, that's why um, people go to a president to uh, argue for a bailout. Because they know that is a, a point, the president, that sets, uh, is on top of a whole uh, pyramid of coercion. And it has high leverage if they manage to influence the president. Then uh, they control the whole pyramid below him. And um, yeah, that's also why uh, invaders go to the capital, because that is a sensitive point to a whole deterministic pyramid of coercion. They have leverage there if they intervene at that point, and everyone who does so uh, implicitly agrees with uh, the determinism below that point. That's why they, why, why they go there. That's also why you debate people to change their minds and not rain clouds because rain clouds do not have a very uh, sensitive point that controls a whole uh, pyramid of uh, high leverage so yeah if you give me a good argument then that can change my whole uh, beliefs it can change my actions it has huge leverage but uh, yeah no such thing in a rain cloud at least uh, no one uh, showed that yet and I think no one will. You know, the, the question I always have about determinism is uh, I'm not expecting you to answer it, and of course unless you want to, is I have a great deal of difficulty with beliefs that don't seem to make any difference to people. Right? So what I always, I'm not saying you're a determinist, but what I always want to ask for determinists, and I have asked this many, many times, is okay, so what changes when you become a determinist? Right? So if I become an anarchist, then what changes? Well, um, I no longer accept the validity uh, of the state, and so I have to make debates against the state, and I, there's a whole sort of thing. If I become an atheist, what's the behavior that changes? Well, I no longer go to church, uh, you know, unless it is to try and get other people to give up their illusions or whatever. Uh, I don't pray uh, anymore, and uh, I don't... Also a recurring thing, no one ever explained him what difference it makes. No one ever did, right? Just a reminder here that Stefan believes in honesty and integrity. And not in preaching about it, but in demonstrating it, you know. Of course, this whole stuff has been pointed out extensively. 
But uh, he has a problem with uh, theories that do not make a difference. Hmm. So there would be like the theory of uh, gravity, like, I mean, determinism is a descriptive theory of what goes on in reality, not a prescriptive one. When Newton discovered the theory of gravity, did people say to him, oh, what difference does it make? Will apples stop falling from trees if I believe it? Or do they fall differently before and after the theory was discovered? It should not make a difference. Because Newton's theory describes what goes on in reality. When Archimedes discovered that an object submerged in uh, water gets an upward pressure equal to the volume of the displaced water, these people say like, well, what difference does it make if I believe your theory? Will things stop floating or something? No. I have a problem with theories that do, do make a difference. I mean, if you believe a theory and the theory makes predicts an observation that is not observed, then the theory is wrong. And it's, it's incorrect. And if you believe in that theory, you're wrong as well. Even though there is a causal chain that causes you to come to that belief. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Th theories should, about reality should not make a difference. That is um, logical. Um, and also when he says that uh, people are welcome to talk about determinism, uh, did he forget he banned a subject on the board? Uh, it's all uh, demonstrating honesty and integrity, right? Mm -hmm will automatically uh, learn from that. Now, the lady who had some objections uh, in this podcast to the arguments that made in free will determinism debate had a master's degree in mathematics, right? And this fits my theory that uh, people with training in the exact sciences will notice the errors in this argument. Uh, errors are not a problem as such, but yeah, the way people react to it when you point it out is very revealing. And in high school, I noticed immediately the difference when when I I got acquainted with the exact sciences and and all the other subjects. You know, mostly the other subjects are just human argument, human agreements, right? They do not say anything about reality with absolute certainty. No repeatable experiments with controllable factors, with outcomes that follow exact principles with certainty that uh, is within the tolerance of your measuring equipment. And that are repeated for many, many years, millions of experiments, without one exception being found. That's your exact sciences. Compare that to... to uh, <laughs> The Keynesian Phillips curve and inflation and unemployment do not go go together. Economics in schools is it, it, just bollocks, you know. It's a joke. But what mathematically has to fail will fail. I mean, ignoring exact sciences is not an option. It's also strange about these debt ceiling debates. <laughs> People they, they believe in magic is that. That something can come out of nothing. It, the, their laws can change reality. I mean, it's just, it's just nonsense. Uh, if, uh, if in physics you have principles that that uh, say that the situation on time t plus one follows uniquely from the situation on time t. And I, I'm not going to demiss that hand wavingly because I don't see anyone fucking a cloud to make it pregnant. It's just a hubris. It's inconceivable to me. I, I just humbly seek the error in my reasoning when I come up with that kind of stuff until I find it. You can't treat thousands of years of mathematics and physics in the same way as a dreamed up philosopher theory. 
But uh, yeah, Stephen can't ditch the idea of nature on time t plus one being exactly determined by nature on time t because um, he needs nature as giving some uh, rough guidelines. The, the laws of nature are just some rough rough guidelines within which your free will operates. You know? And he, he cannot let go of that because of the way he defined morality. Um, morality is this, this wonderful tool of subjugation and exploitation or has been in the past always at least that he is going to turn around to use for good right he's going to wrestle morality back from the rulers and make it into a tool for the good yet when when people come to him and say well I'm gonna take political action he claims uh, you cannot use something that is designed for evil and use it for good try turning your local mafia into the United Way is inconsistency there. Either you can use something designed for evil and use it for good, or you can't, I would say. I also noticed the following pattern in his uh, lectures to determinists. And as a determinist, or accepting determinism as a true principle of reality, you always look for patterns and cause and effects. And what I notice is that when people crawl up to Stephen's feet, self-attacking about their own shortcomings, then he goes into a deterministic mode. He tell, uh, tell me about your childhood. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, your shortcomings were inflicted upon you. Uh, you can't help it. It's like someone broke your legs. You won't claim you are a bad runner if someone broke your legs. You uh, Would you? Let me help you regain your self-respect through explaining the determinism of how you got where you are. And that's when you come in from that level. Eh? But uh, if you come to me with pride and dignity, then uh, shortcomings are targeted and no cause in the past is sought for its explanation. As that would take away the power of blame and shame and humiliation. Right? Can't explain that one. Suddenly, free will is a causeless fountain of his actions. No excuse possible. No, no look behind it. Don't look behind the curtain. Like the government is a fountain of money, and this free will is a source of actions. Don't look behind the source where it comes from. Or the curtain of the wizard of us. Don't move it right. Don't follow that causal chain. Looking behind that uh, curtain. And behind the dead end of causation leads to uh, aggression. Always. Unless, of course, you are an authority and right? you're interviewed for true news. Though when his guests can say the craziest things and get unchallenged, you know, support for statism, welfare state, and government, taking care of raising kids in Sweden, doesn't matter, you know, unchallenged. Because there are two classes of people, right? They're the uppies. I've written a book, I uh, have a website. Uh, they can say crazy stuff. They will not be challenged. And you have to flock also, right? If, uh, they should be humble or uh, they get questioned. Uh, uh, it seems like a you know, performative contradiction for someone who preaches like uh, the same people, same rules. Uh. No uppies and lowies. Now, someone once argued that central planning is often advocated by authors and because uh, an author uh, plans his uh, novel and the characters in it. Uh, I thought it was an interesting take on things. And um, I think people think that central planning is needed because they're, they think their own actions are centrally, plan centrally planned by uh, their free will I. So the idea that central planning is unavoidable is held even by the by the plant, you know, the, by the human resources themselves. But let's look at this free will I more accurately. 
closely. You can, for example, say my arm, and my arm, and my leg, and, and my kidney, and you can even say my brain and my body. And the I who claims this part as his own, as his property, uh, when he's talking of my bro brain, is apparently outside the body, controlling the body with invisible wires or something. So if you say my brain, it means that the eye is different from the brain. Uh, just in a way, like you say my uh, my car, and it's also you and the car are different. You own the car, it's my car. On my brain, there's a my, and there's a brain that it owns. Right? And, and my body is a my, and it owns the body, and it controls the body. So this I person, this I concept is, is outside the body, right? And controlling the body with these invisible wires. Maybe you can shield them with a tinfoil hat, right? Uh, but um, I think the same thing holds for um, government. Um, or one more thing that this uh, this free will I uh, more or less relates uh, to the body as a driver relates to his car. You see the the car you can change parts, keep driving. It keeps being your car. It ages like the body. It can crash. Uh, it dies. Uh, but the driver keeps controlling the car, right? So that's the I is sitting in the in the body or. It's not really in the body because you can say my body is outside the body, somewhere, somewhere here floating, I think. <clears throat> the same thing holds for, for government. So it is outside society but inside at the same time it shifts position like free will central planner does also change position. It owns everything, government, but simultaneously it is owned by its human resource. So people often say, uh, you forget, uh, people are bad and therefore we need government. Which clearly makes government non-people based, right? Otherwise the argument wouldn't hold. So it makes uh, the central planner uh, is, uh, is non-flawed controller behind the curtain outside the, the principles that hold for the rest of the body of society. Yeah? So. I would say the government is an upscaled version of the free will I. It is, uh, it is part but not part of the rest, and it controls, and it is uh, logically inconsistent. So uh, yeah, that's my uh, argument. Let me know what you think.